I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And let me tell you about our rights. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right to people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We're not in America. Oh, damn it. No, you're right. <laughs> Okay. All right. We're in England. Well, we're in Britain. We're in... Where are we in, Mark? Where are, where are we? Mark? Yes. Big gap there. Big gap. I did it him him on purpose. Big, you... yeah. big gap. God big gap there. damn tell it. Him up. That's it. One of the Ravens flown. <laughs> so we know he's in. And we know you're in, Gazelle. So that's it. We don't need to actually have any further introductions. So that's it. End of story. Okay. So okay. let's get this all kicked off. All right. Now, this is further to our podcast last week, and we're discussing things that have come up which have interested us. Now, do you feel like free people? Hey, did anybody see that, uh, that guy, what he said? He sent a, a message out to the chief of the Metropolitan Police. Did anybody see that? Yeah. Okay. He said he was going to pay pay for him to come over and remove him, remove him from U.S. soil. You know, and he basically turned around and he said, 1776 saw to that. Hey, we can't even remove people from our own soil. We've got no chance. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, dream well, these people, though. Oh, they? it was so fun, 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 funny. Okay. Right at the moment, I feel as free as Nelson Mandela did. <laughs> To be honest. So are you feeling the, the fear, sir? Are you feeling it? I'm certainly not feeling any fear. I'm feeling fed up. Well, has anybody asked Keir how many houses they've built so far? <laughs> are you lie, <laughs> won't he? <laughs> <laughs> and Angela Rayner. Okay, Ange. How many houses have you built so far? Mm. Mm. That's Come a good on. answer there. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. Oh, well, okay. Mark, kick us off with some of this stuff and let's get this conversation rolling. All right? Well, yeah, well, you can ask Labour questions, but it just dep it depends on what day you ask them, doesn't it, really? And then you can find all their hypocrisy and flip-flopping and backtracking. So I've got a bit of a list going. It's only been four weeks, and they have backtracked and changed their mind on a hell of a lot of stuff. So we'll start with the two-tier justice system that Downing Street said, oh, those claims are baseless. And Mark Rowley said... Uh, he dismissed them as absolute nonsense. Okay. In 2015, <laughs> Starmer said, Gove is right, our two-tier justice system. <laughs> but he you blamed know. cuts. He blamed cuts. And he was actually describing unfairness to poor people and children being neglected. But it does exist. It doesn't exist. Does it exist? I think it does, doesn't it? It does. It does. <laughs> the worrying thing is the um, 10,000 uh, sex case backlog, which isn't being rushed into the courts. Worrying. I couldn't, Just get, over. I couldn't mm. get over some of the things I was actually, you know, watching and, and reading about certain things. Like I can, you know, in 2017, Rachel Reeves was complaining about immigration. Now, did. admittedly, it was the conservatives that actually really caused a lot of the problems, especially with the online laws. And I'll give way to the do gazelle. You want to know? I was going to say, do you want to know what she said before you give way to the gazelle? Go on then. Rachel Reeve said, this is hilarious, riots could sweep streets of Britain if immigration is not curbed after Brexit. Can you believe that? <laughs> no, no. So it's Tommy and Nigel's fault now, but back then it was not. Okay. It, was, it, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. it wasn't. These are the things, the inconsistencies yeah. that are coming up. Go ahead, gazelle. They yeah, are. It is. And are they are the cuts that Starmer is on about there, Mark? Are they the same cuts that uh, one of his Labour one of his Labour councils were on about when he got pulled up in that video and got dragged into court for saying <laughs> we should cut certain people's throats? Yes. Are they the same cuts that Starmer was on about? I wouldn't think they would. I think so. 
Yeah. Where have all the Conservatives been? You know, oh, they, they're just nowhere. Absolutely where the official, nowhere. I have not Who? heard one statement from the official opposition. No. I've not heard one statement. Well, yes, where you have. have. The official opposition is Douglas Murray. <laughs> Elon Musk. Elon Musk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because I, you know, I've not heard anything from Farage at all, which actually makes any sense. You know, I, you know, yes, we can all say that we don't support or advocate the violence that has been happening. We can all say that, and some of it is virtue signaling. None of us, we never advocated at all for violence. We think that the protest should be peaceful. And we think we should peacefully all sit down and nobody go into work on Monday. What do you think of that? <laughs> I'll go with that. Yeah, you Did just you see? Bring Did the you whole see? economy to a halt. Go ahead, Trevor. Yeah, oh, stop the, it with uh, the, the gaps. Is all, with all the stop the gaps. Stop it. There's no gaps, sir. There was. was. From the river to the sea, Trevor's gaps will be free. Hey. <laughs> yeah, gaps there'll be a gap gaps. between your two ears that we'll expose. There was a gap. I did it on purpose. Now, I think he froze you... actually the first time. No, I didn't freeze the first time. I was doing it on purpose. Oh, well, did yeah. you see did you see the numpties with all the little um the, all the little banners that have been supplied by one of the major unions? They were yeah. doing a protest out of, outside the head offices of Reform UK. Did you see that? What was the point of that? Well, I'll tell you what it was. It was number 83 Victoria Street. Do you know what that place is? It's not you know Reform's office, is it? No, go on. No, oh, it's a post office. Yeah. Post office box, right? It's a thick. 83 Victoria Street. There's no offices there. So so they're all protesting outside. It's actually a P.O. box. It's, the offices are nowhere near there. They're not even in London. Oh, God. And they were all there protesting, you know, that Nigel Farage and all this lot. And they were protesting outside the P.O. box. What the hell was that about? I, you know, I. Oh, love it. Love I, it. Well, the P.O. box. Yes, yes. I know. Go ahead, box, Mark. Yeah. I only but, know because of certain reasons. They're not blessed with brains, are they? <clears throat> so here's another flip-flop. So the full force of the law, remember? The full force. So Jonathan Reynolds, who's business secretary, said those caught up in recent violence would not be included in the release scheme. But then a government source later said he misspoke. <laughs> it depends on the conviction and the length of the sentence. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> They're being cool. Oh, the carries on. <laughs> 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 We've seen Hamza Yusuf. He was threatening oh. Elon Musk. I mean, obviously, Elon's been threatened with legal action as well for different things, but Hamza was actually threatening. And Elon Musk said, Go ahead, make my day. And I saw the comments on Twitter and I commented, I said, Hamza, this man has his own space program. He also has his own satellites, which aid information technology throughout the whole of the world in an, and in far-flung places on the earth. Basically, you, failed politician, what are you going to do? Back down. There's just no competition. The guy knows what he's doing, and he knows exactly. He's got the information at his fingertips. So what's the point? And also, you know, the government getting annoyed with him. God, what are they going to do? They're going to get even more annoyed when Trump gets in in November 24. What are they going to do, mate? They're going to put him in jail for 20 months, which is already reduced by half, and then knock 40% off that too. Yep. Oh, full force and all that. That's it. That's the one. That's the one. Hey, you know, be careful what you're saying, because we could all be in there. Don't accept any cautions. Trial by jury. Go. Do me a favor. Three meals a day. Don't have to clean up after me, son. I get to use the gym every day. Do it. <laughs> Tre- I get looking- off work and I finish his brilliance do it Trevor's looking very crestfallen <laughs> because he wants to retire he I doesn't want to go to prison thinking, he wants to retire I'm thinking, I'm thinking if I get a month in Greece again I might get a month in Greece and a month in jail so I've been whopping all of this year <laughs> oh my word uh, I for what you know I just I cannot understand well the one thing the serious point is that once you start to attack the liberties of freedom of movement and freedom of speech, especially as you're the country of Magna Carta, then, then you are actually messing 
around with something that isn't going to end well. Go ahead, Mark. You mentioned free speech. Flip-flop time again. <laughs> Keir Starmer, we don't need a law against insults. He backs free speech and says it's okay to offend people. He had an investigation in 2017 by the Times, nine people a day being arrested for posting allegedly offensive material online. Nearly 3,400 people arrested in 2016 alone. So what's Keir Starmer done so far to reverse this? <laughs> Nothing quite the opposite. So this is another one we'll come back to in a year and see how many people have been arrested for this free speechy box. We'll come back to that one too, I think, won't we? <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm beginning hey, to... Just started, I've got loads of these. <laughs> I'm beginning Where's to... Where's he gone again now? I've not heard it Hang on a again. minute. I was trying to get in there. Yeah, but I'm getting in for... So I'm closing a gap. That's all I'm doing. Make your mind up. You can right, either not have gap. a gap or you can't have a gap. Who's gaps? The gap. oh, gaps. Close the Who's gap. Close the gap. Who's gaps? Who's gaps? Who's gaps? Free, free, free gaps. I'm going to make I'm gonna make some little <laughs> placards up and we're going to hit the streets. I'll do, I'm going to come outside your house <clears> and everybody's going to be asking you questions. All your neighbours are going to be saying... What are these gaps, Trevor? <laughs> and, and they ain't going to be referring to your teeth either, I can assure no, you. No gaps in my teeth. No gaps there. No justice, no gaps. No justice, <laughs> no gaps. I've got loads of these as well, by the way. <laughs> it's just that gaps on an edit absolutely drive me nuts. That's what it is. And I know whether you're doing it on problem. purpose. At least we didn't have gaps with the Raven. But mind you, nobody could get a <laughs> word a in edgeways. Well, so yeah, you couldn't get a word in, could you? I've been getting gaps. <laughs> we had a massive one for months. Yes. Anyway, should we go back to some flip-flopping? Oh, and yes, some go ahead, please. How about, the, how about this one? They love a bit of disinformation, don't they? Everything's different disinformation. So, Keir Starmer promotes AstraZeneca as safe and effective and tells people, when it's your turn, do it. Oh, AstraZeneca, withdraw vaccines due to blood clots. <laughs> Fake news. Yep. So who's really spreading disinformation? Would it be hope not hate with that list that we put out? Would it be <sighs> the left? Uh, everyone's a fascist and Starm and everyone's far right. Would it be Labour with their Palestinian state? Because that's not happening either, is it? That's mm. what I don't understand. They are fake news. At the last election, if you go <laughs> look at the records, I mean, Labour were quite well supported with funds from Israel. Not directly from Israel, but... Oh, that was on my list as well, yeah. Friends for Israel and uh, you know mm. things like that and different people. And I was thinking, I don't understand because there is a, a sort of, I don't know, an incongruous relationship whereby everybody's getting the impression that people who are supporters of Palestine, Palestinian Gaza supporters who go out marching you know, every weekend or have been, and yet the Labour Party were receiving funds from Israeli-based individuals and companies. And I don't understand that relationship, you know, what's going on. Go ahead, Mark. He's gaslighting people again, isn't he? It's as simple as that. And it's not the only people he's gaslighting, so he's gaslighting the Muslims, isn't he? By saying you can have your state, while at the same time his MPs are getting money. He's also gaslighting the socialists, because apparently he used to be one, and he backed one to be a prime minister. Yet when he got a sniff of power, he stabbed them all in the back. He's accused them of socialism and having a link to their anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. Yet, and there's now a report about a, a massive rise compared to last year in anti-Semitism. His wife's Jewish. Is full force of the law coming out? Well, that's the thing. Are we labelling the people who are causing it? Are we grouping them all together? Are we I'm, knocking their doors down? I'm not spreading mm -hmm. any form of disinformation. Those facts can actually be derived. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've got all the sources that I'm actually speaking about. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, there is something not quite right going on. Now, okay, I spoke to somebody today who was, how you would say, a lefty liberal. And I've known them for a long time. And I said, don't you think that Labour have severed all connections with the white working class? And he said, yeah. He said, there's been an expansion of the upper middle class. And he separates it. And he said, Labour have gone for that cohort. And he doesn't care. I said, and what do you think of all the inconsistencies that have gone on? And he said, oh, no. He said, I want to see somebody strong. 
you know, on the law. And I just went, what? I said, have you seen the inconsistencies? I said, what about telling that to a mother of a 14-year-old kid that was, that was killed? And they've let out one of the killers uh, who was convicted killer after only six months to make room for all of these people that are being done for online crime, and which he was silent. There was just absolute silence on the phone about it. And he just went, well, that's not right, is it? So he said, what could you say? He said, you couldn't actually say anything to a mother which will actually make up for anything of that nature. And then he went on to another subject quite quickly because he didn't want to dwell on it. And I'm thinking... Well, he wouldn't, would he? No. So I'm thinking, well, okay. Now, I, 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 I like this guy. I do. I really like this guy. But I'm thinking, well, okay. Maybe there is a middling point of which people can actually get together and discuss things. But it doesn't seem to be that way at the moment. It seems to be that the police are on a power trip as well. And I don't think it's going to last because it can't, it's, it's unsustainable. Go ahead, Mark. Has anyone met any uh, Labour voters who A, admit they voted Labour and B, admit they've got buyer's remorse? Because I'm oh. bumping into a couple oh, yeah. now, you know, and I can tell by the looks on the other people's faces who are standing there listening that they also voted Labour too, especially when they walk off and I'm laughing at them for buyer's remorse. Because yeah, he's upset old people, he's upsetting car drivers, which we'll come on to, uh, pensioners, yep. taxpayers, everybody. He is backtracking on literally everything. Yeah, it's shocking. Go ahead, Trevor. Yeah, Mrs. Balls today when she mentioned that we've got to mm. rebuild, we have to rebuild faith in the police. <laughs> They've just spent the last week telling the police that they back them fully, whatever they do. <laughs> the plop. <laughs> I, I can't I can't begin to tell you that I, and I thought it was so audacious of Sadiq Khan who has protection and he's got an armor plated car in London who said that he was felt unsafe now this is the guy who was actually proclaiming in the past that they're tackling knife crime and he feels unsafe in London and I, hang gone hang gone remember when he said terrorism was just part and parcel so I'll come far right in, you know, inverted commas again, riots, protests, whatever, and all this, the stuff he's scared of. Why isn't that part and parcel? Makes you laugh. It's maddening. Well, it's maddening. Should we have some more examples of some hypocrisy? Yes, it is maddening. It's I've maddening. It is actually maddening. That's a good word, that. So the moaning, they were moaning, weren't they, at the Tories? Rachel Reeves again. It's outrageous that so much public money is being siphoned to Tory friends and donors. Okay. A political donor who's made dono donations to Rachel Reeves, Labour's new Chancellor, has been made Director in the Treasury. <laughs> Sorry, wow. what? So here they go again. Flip-flop. They just... There's, there's, honestly, they're not even trying to hide this now, are they? So in their manifesto, there was nothing about a new road tax for electric vehicles. <laughs> no, there is now. <laughs> And listen, I, I don't, has anybody heard about the story of the three white police officers? They have won a discrimination claim after judge rules they were unfairly passed over for promotion due to their race. And this oh, is good. a Thames Valley was, police. Yeah, because the first one was actually in Cheshire, wasn't it, a few years back? Well, I, just to give you a brief on it, Detective Inspector Philip Turner Robson, Inspector Graham Horton and Kirstine Bishop a custody inspector, brought employment tribunal proceedings against Thames Valley Police. Do you remember when they were called the Chad Valley Police? <laughs> you know, like that little cartoon that was made, you know, and they were likened to them. They were, they were toy police. Anyway, against Thames Valley Police, claiming to have been disadvantaged because they were, as described in the tribunal, white British. Now, that should send some shock waves through to the government. It won't. Uh, no, no, it's got to because... They'll just ignore it like they did last time. Uh, it happened uh, up uh, here. No, you can't ignore that, that kind of stuff. Well, they did because it's happened three times now and it only happened once years ago. Well, okay. So it's getting worse, not uh, better. It's because it, these, these people don't care. They're just liars and frauds. Well, I think they would. Uh, let's, let's just see what happens with that. 
And also, let's just see what happens, because it appears that Elon Musk is still needling Starmer. Good. I, I mean, hmm. I, I know that uh, he's interviewing Trump, you know, this evening. And would you say that that hails the entrance of Trump back onto X? He's back. He's put a few tweets. I don't know if he's just doing it because he's going to be on there later, but I think he should stay on there. Yeah. It's a good way of getting it. I know he's got his own truth social, but it's not got as much reach. And he can't wind the lefties up because they don't really go on there. So, Did anybody know there are people in Australia, okay, might be from certain areas that we normally wouldn't associate with, but they are they were protesting for British free speech. And... Mm. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> moving on <laughs> before we get in trouble yeah. there weren't people I'd like to be hanging around with put it this way <laughs> well none of us would but I mean I'm just stating the fact yeah. that they were they were they were actually protesting for British free speech and I so, know but but you can't be real Nazis if you protest for right. British free speech can you so they're fake as well yeah, they're so, just as bad as Starmer and his bunch they don't, they're all confused well I, did, I, I was reading and I was thinking what the hell is that about and then I thought it was neo-Nazis and I just thought uh uh-uh. uh no 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 mm. no 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 but anyway uh, like Tesco every little helps <laughs> <laughs> what like ta- what like taxes? You mean? <laughs> they weren't going to put. They weren't going to mess with any taxes, were they? No. But what have we got? Inheritance, capital gains, pensions. Oh, it doesn't stop, does it? There's just so much about different things that are going on. Anyway, wait till October. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh, whenever when all the old people freeze to death. Oh, that's yes. how they would have said it. If it was the Conservatives, that's how they would have said it, wouldn't they? The mean Tories are freezing all the pensioners. Yes. The mean socialists are doing it now, aren't they? Well, yeah. And they're I've not going to back about really. on. And it's only from April this year where Keir Starmer was saying an old lady of 84 was, had to stay in bed all day because she was freezing. He said, that is awful. He did. He rinsed the Conservatives for that, didn't he? Oh, yes. Yep. <laughs> on that interview, he said, this should not be allowed. It's awful. And he's only been in a week and he's, he, they've announced they're taking the uh, winter fuel off the pensioners. Did you say that's awful or that's awful? <laughs> awful. Absolutely awful. <laughs> oh, you are awful, but I like you. Remember that? Oh, one? God. We should uh, sort of start pushing some of those programs because they were so funny. Do you remember that program, Love Thy Neighbor? <laughs> oh, yeah. Those were the days. <laughs> Shut up, Jockey. Yeah. That's <laughs> And he called him White Hunky. <laughs> White Hunky. <laughs> yeah, but, but that was okay. That was all right. That was okay. Nobody, nobody said a word. What about Alf Garnet? Oh, brilliant. Ah, they, were all, hell. they were all having a go at each other. So, you know. And now, was, try doing that was. now, and you like you get Ofcom coming down on you like a ton of bricks. Well, you won't even end up locked up for six months, three months, one month, two weeks. Actually, that wouldn't be bad to get me away from my wife <laughs> and <bail>. kids. <laughs> somebody, somebody said to me at church on uh, on Sunday, a church on Sunday. Yeah, you wouldn't believe that, would you? Church on Sunday. But anyway, somebody said to me, said, well, we haven't seen your children in a while. And I said, well, I said, I wish I could say the same. (laughs) (laughs) You can pray, John. You can pray. Miracles do happen. (laughs) I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. You know, my son went in and looked in the refrigerator and there were sandwiches made. And he ate two sandwiches, not just one sandwich. He ate two sandwiches. And I looked at him and I thought, how is he still staying so skinny? eating two sandwiches. I mean, the, the kid eats like a horse. I mean, I don't mean he goes out and chews grass, but, you know, I'm telling you. I'm yeah, but he doesn't have like, uh, six bottles of Peroni like us. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he stays a bit He goes to gym, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, things like that. You know, there's little, tell, there's helps, little tell say like in stores. <laughs> those kind of things, I think those kind of things help. Well, I'm going to call it there, and then yeah. we'll move on to uh, something else in part two. I'm sure we can come up with another hundred okay, things indeed. for next week that they've backtracked on. But before we do, can I just say, what did communists use to light their homes before candles? I give in. Electricity. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that hurt, that hurt. It did, didn't it? Ooh. Why does a socialist only drink herbal tea? Give in. Be- because property is theft. <laughs> uh. You will not own anything and you will be happy. 
And I did. I almost dated a socialist once, but there were too many red flags. <laughs> <laughs> those, those are proper dad jokes. I they know. really are. <laughs> okay. But now myself. Onwards to part two. What a while. Yes. What a while. No Cheerio. gaps, Trevor. No gaps. Uh, <laughs> from the river to the sea, Trevor's gaps will be free. Be free. And Who's the banners made up next gaps. week, Matt? And we can tell you what at the town centre. Whose gaps? Our gaps.